So today we're going to be talking about the DRIV ETF from BetaShares, which is the new electric vehicle or EV ETF, which is newly launched. We're also going to be having a look at the EV trend overall. If you guys are new here, my name is Fabi. This channel is about finance and investing. Before we begin, this video is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. Let's jump into it. So ASX DRIV basically gives us exposure to the leading global innovators in automotive technology. And the objective of the ETF is to basically track an index that tracks those types of companies. Now, as you guys probably know, cars have come a super long way from when they were first made. Back in the 1600s, they used to be steam powered, believe it or not. But of course, now in the modern times, we've got internal combustion engines or ICE cars, which is what we have now. And you probably have them as well. But increasingly throughout the last 10 or 15 years or so, there has been a shift towards electric vehicles or EVs. Now these cars do not run on petrol, they have an electric motor, cars like Tesla and a few other or lots of others that are obviously joining into this new EV space that are trying to transform their traditional ICE engine cars to fully EV cars, which we'll have a look at in just a second. Now this DRIV ETF is what we would call a thematic ETF, right? It's tracking a certain theme, a very specific theme about global innovators in automotive technology. So basically companies that are trying to innovate in the space, mostly EV companies as well. And it's tracking those specific companies. It's not a broad ETF, which tracks every single company in that index. It's just tracking those specific companies. We've seen so many car manufacturers who traditionally had ICE engines, you know, manufacturers like Mercedes, Audi and BMW, but now they're trying to transform their business and they're actually releasing cars that are fully electric an example that we can see here is the Audi e-tron. This is a fully electric mid-size SUV. Doesn't look too bad either. And obviously they're trying to expand on these types of offerings. This type of car is a first for this company. And I think we're gonna see more and more car manufacturers trying to do a very kind of company first where they release an electric vehicle where it's fully electric and it hasn't been done in the whole history of that company. If these electric cars were more affordable, especially in Australia, we would be seeing a huge take up from the average person trying to buy these types of cars. But it seems to me that Australia as a country, we seem to be lagging behind some other counterparts of ours, countries in Europe, Australia, or even China. It seems to me that the EV take up in those countries is a lot more than Australia. Right now here for the average person, it is just not as affordable as a normal car. But looking at the trend overall, we can see that more than 10 million electric cars were on the world's roads in 2020 with battery electric models driving the expansion. And based on this graph, as you guys can see, it has pretty much accelerated quite a lot in the past three to four years or so. If I kind of scroll down a little bit, we can see the makeup of each different color. So China has been basically leading the way with Chinese battery electric vehicles making up a huge chunk. And then you also have Chinese plug-in hybrids coming in second with these two blues. And then you also have Europe as well coming in at second. Then of course you have the US in yellow and orange. So solely based on this graph, the trend does seem to be accelerating, but let's look into the future and look at some future predictions. Now this brochure, as you guys can see, this is by BetaShares. It's in their you know, document pack. So just keep in mind that obviously they're gonna try to present this ETF as the best thing for you to buy. But obviously make sure you look at some other sources as well because with BetaShares, it's their job to sell you on this product. And of course, they're gonna show you some really good statistics on why this trend is gonna be good. But generally we can see it's a trend that's gonna grow. But as we can see anyways with this graph, based on different scenarios with the stated policy scenario by 2030, we can pretty much see this trend almost doubling based on that. But if we look at the second scenario, which is the sustainable development scenario, we can see a huge uplift up to even 46 million global EV sales by 2030. So these predictions are obviously quite insane and you can really see that this trend has a lot more room to grow. And this is really where this ETF comes into play. Looking at the benefits, of course, we've got the access to the growth potential of the automotive technology revolution. Sales of EVs are projected to grow as we just had a look. And these vehicles are significantly different than what we're currently used to with normal cars. We can obviously see a difference between the way they look, they operate and they move both in the interior side of things and the exterior as well. And we can only see this trend growing in the future. These EVs also use high quality tech and lots and lots of semiconductors, which are currently in short supply at the moment. Now, if you wanna know why, you can check out the video right here, which goes into the whole semiconductor thing and how you can actually invest in this sector as well. So go check it out. But because of all this tech, EVs are obviously going to get better over time, especially with autonomous driving coming into play as well. Secondly, we've got exposure to the leading global automotive technology innovators, right? So this ETF includes about 50 different companies from stuff like Tesla, Uber, 
Neo, which is a Chinese EV maker. And the thing is, as you guys already know, and the thing that I've talked about so many times with these ETF videos is the fact that Australia is quite low in tech. We are mostly dominated by banking and miners, right? Those two types of sectors, they make up around 50% of our overall economy. So getting exposure to stuff like tech through these types of ETFs is a good idea to look into. I'm not telling you to buy it, but definitely do the research and look into it. The management fees are 0.67% per year, which is around $67 per 10K invested. It is priced pretty similar to other thematic ETFs out there by BetaShares and some other competitors as well. So it's pretty fairly priced. Jumping into the returns, it was down about 1% today, but looking at the month return, it is down 11%. Obviously, we've seen the whole NASDAQ index, S&P 500, even the ASX 200, 300. It has seen a bit of a sell-off recently, so it is to be expected, especially with tech ETFs like this. But looking at the return since inception, it is obviously around 12% since it really only just launched. Now, if we actually compare this ETF to the MISCI or MSCI World Index, which holds about 1,500 companies, we can see that this ETF has definitely outperformed, at least at the moment. But obviously keep in mind that the MISCI index is well diversified. So obviously the returns aren't gonna be as huge. You're just gonna get market returns. But with ETFs like this, since it is very concentrated, the return potential is quite high. But at the same time, the risk potential is there as well. And the example that I'll give you guys is the fact that during that March 2020 crash, we can see that at the beginning, they were pretty much at similar levels but this ETF dropped by almost double the amount more. So of course, there's gonna be a lot more volatility, but if you're willing to accept the volatility and if you buy into the whole story of EVs going to grow in the future, then the returns should be there, hopefully in the future. The index that this ETF is tracking started off in 2012 at 100 points, and just before the March crash, the highest that it reached was around 278. Of course, that is about double and a bit more return. Then it dropped down to around say 180 during the bottom of the crash. And then we can see that the real returns have been made just after that crash where it reached an absolute peak of 550. And of course, the tech crash that we've seen. So it's gone down to about 450 mark. Now, as I mentioned with the ETFs like these, these are thematic ETFs. So of course you do need to have a long-term perspective. I say this all the time and I sound like a broken record, but it is so, so important. Now think about it like this, right? If you were to imagine a world where most people drive EVs, how long do you think it would take for that to become a reality, right? Chances are you will say that it's gonna take longer than five to 10 years. And that is the exact type of mindset that you need to have hopefully greater than 10 years of reaching that sort of reality. So of course, have that long-term mindset. Looking at some other information, the fees are 0.67 as we discussed previously, and the dividend frequency is at least annually. Of course, this is a growth ETF. It is not a dividend ETF, but still they will pay a dividend at least annually, but that is not the focus. Looking at the holdings, we've got companies like Uber at 8%, Tesla at 7.8. Of course, we have to have Tesla in this whole mix. They've pretty much been quite revolutionary in leading the whole EV space and they've really popularized the idea of EVs. It seems to me that there is a whole cult surrounding Elon Musk and Tesla. So of course it is gonna have a pretty high weighting in the ETF. We also have Volkswagen, Volvo, Neo, a lot of EV companies in there as well, but some other companies like semiconductor companies too. So once you dig a bit more into it, you can really see that this ETF is trying to capture this whole movement, not just the actual car manufacturers, but the other little industries that surround this whole space. That is why this ETF is not focused on just EVs. It is not even named, you know, the electric vehicle ETF. It is named around the automotive industry. And you'll really see this play out when we have a look at the sectors where we've got 40% of just the manufacturers but then we have so many other industries like auto parts at 16, semiconductors at 13, construction, trucking, electrical, and all those other subsectors make up this overall industry. So it's giving you a much more holistic view of this sector in general. Looking at the countries, we can see that 50% is towards the US. Then we have China at 24, Germany, and a few other kind of European countries because these countries are at the forefront of the EV movement. Mostly with these thematic ETFs, we do see them to be quite concentrated towards the US. So it is what it is. Now, in terms of my opinion, I do think that this sector is definitely going to grow. Obviously not financial advice. I'm just a random person on the internet, but we can see based on past data and based on predictions as well that we can see a trend forming. I've also been observing social media and people around me in general. And it seems to me that the younger generation specifically 
is much more focused on sustainability and they want to make sure that their investments are making a positive impact on the environment. Over the next couple of decades, these generations are going to be the next investors. Therefore, companies are going to see that and they are going to try and cater to that. But you will have to ride out the volatility because it's literally only 50 companies in the ETF. If you enjoyed this video, check out my other video on the semi ETF right here. This video talks about semiconductors, what they are, how you can benefit from them and why they relate to EVs in general. So go check it out. And guys, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. The index that is eat.